Grantham has been lauded multiple times for its science. And today we're going to be tackling the most controversial topic known to gun kind, 9mm versus 45. The question is, which will do better? Which will do worse? Are we going to break hearts today? Probably. So I hope you'll enjoy your time with Grantham Science as we compare 9mm versus 45. Now, before we get started, we want to give a thank you to our biggest sponsor, Brownells. Thank you, Brownells, very base. We, of course, have Hunting Clash. Somewhere out there, there's a E3 or an E4, and you're sitting there at the rail yard, getting ready for NTC or JRTC, and you need a cool game to play. Well, lucky for you, Hunting Clash is a sponsor of this particular video. And a big thank you to them. Sponsors like them keep our videos free. So the question is, why is it awesome? Well, you can hunt in a variety of locations, anywhere from the mountains of Montana to the deserts and a variety of animals, anything from your typical little varmints all the way up to bears, deer, some more exotic animals. Now, if you're a gun guy like me, there are of course a variety of weapons to choose from, anything from your bolt guns to 22 lever actions for your smaller game, including larger bore lever action rifles, and of course, semi-automatic rifles, crossbows, Everything you could ever want is in this game, and it's pretty damn fun. So you know what? If you're looking to play a game, think about playing Hunting Clash because it's pretty dang fun. As you can see right here, it is a good time. Now, when you use discount code HUNTWITHGRANTHEM, you get 100 gold coins, 70 skill tokens, and of course, two mythical winners. Now make sure you go and redeem that code to give them a big thank you for sponsoring this channel. Check out the link in the description, in the pinned comment, and go and download this game. Thank you for watching, let's get back to the video. And finally, let's get into it. So today we have a bunch of different ammunition that we'll be testing out. So to start off with, our ammunition sponsor, Norma, has of course provided a lot of the ammunition. A big thank you to them. So we're gonna be starting with our full metal jacket round. So we have Spear Lawman, that is 230 grain. And then we of course have 124 grain, both uh, military spec ammunition. Um, we'll be testing these to see how a FMJ performs from both a nine millimeter and a 45. Now, going on from there, we're gonna be using some proven performers. We have Spear Gold Dot, which as you know from our previous test, proved to be very, very good. We have that right there. We will also be using, in conjunction with that, Remington Golden, Golden Saber, a good performer when it comes to 45. And then we have our Norma with our MHPs, proven performers. We have nine millimeters, 108 grains at 1300 feet per second approximately. And then we have the 45, which is 175 grains at 1053 feet per second, which is pretty fast for 45. Then we're gonna be finishing with the most interesting ammunition, Buffalo bore, strong like Buffalo. So what we have here is nine millimeter plus P plus, that is 124 grains traveling at 1300 feet per second at approximately 461 foot pounds. Compare that to the 45 plus P, that is 230 grains traveling at 950 feet per second with again, 461 foot pounds. I think that's gonna be the most interesting test as far as showing the differences between a larger and a smaller round. Now, if you don't know anything about nine millimeter versus 45, nine millimeter typically sits at about subsonic around 900, a little bit less feet per second and about 230 grains. Our nine millimeter is typically about half that weight, 115 grains traveling much faster, anywhere from 1100 to 1200. And in certain cases, 1300 feet per second. The question is, which is better? People have been arguing about it for centuries. A lot of people have talked about the performance of nine millimeter, the performance of 45 and hell, I think 45 is so endearing because it's been used by our military for so long. Hell, some units still use it. Now, with that being said, we're gonna be talking about our ballistic dummies right here. Charlie, do you wanna get up here? So we have Charlie, our medical squire. He has finally earned his uh, white lab coat. We hoped he'd be in medical school by now. Uh, however, we had an incident, so he is still working the range with us today. I was, I was trying to get uh, lessons on anatomy, but I'm not allowed back at the library. Once the permanent suspension is up, I'm really hoping to be able to go back. Well, we're glad to have you here, Charlie. In any case, 
we've seen a lot of ballistic gel test videos, but uh, it, cool, you can go watch those. Lucky Gunner has some really good ones. Today what we're gonna be doing is human body analogs. So we have both bone, we have organs in here, we have blood, we get to have the hydrostatic effect, we get to have the gel which simulates fat and muscle tissue, and this guy's pretty built. So it's gonna be a good time. I'm really, really interested to see how these are gonna perform. I think they're gonna do, I think the 45 is gonna win. I mean, history has proven that it's, that it's pretty good, Charlie. Thank the you. Japanese don't like it. We'll be using a Glock 17 Gen 3 because this is just a gun I use all the time. And then we'll be using a Nighthawk Custom Enforcer 1911. Super nice 1911. Um, I love this thing. So we'll be starting with the Glock 17 right here. Yeah, it's Norma 9 mil. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, Get, thank you, Charlie. All right, go ahead and go. Go ahead and do the 45. Okay, next up we have 45. What do we have right here? Uh, this is spear. Yep, thank, thank, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Spear lawman, 230 grain. Okay, we've shot both 9mm and 45, full metal jacket. The question is, how do they do? Let's go check it out. What I think is really interesting, and Mike, I'm gonna let you get to the side right here and take a look at it, is there is really not that much difference between the nine millimeter and the 45 in terms of their ballistic capability when it comes to a full metal jacket round. Let's take a look at this one right here. Obviously the 45 is a larger diameter. That's gonna be good for hitting the correct structures, but both, didn't really tumble, both didn't fragment because they're pistol rounds. They're just, they just don't do well. Both had complete through and throw, through. So let's check it, check it out the back right here. So if you look, the exit wound on the nine millimeter is actually a little bit more gnarly. It looks like the round tumbled a little bit, which I don't think is specifically indicative of it being a better round. And then we have the 45 exit wound. As you can see, both are very underwhelming. And based on those exit wounds, that is why it is so important to have what, Charlie? To not have that round. Use hollow point. Yes, use hollow points. Your round selection compared to a rifle really matters. So with that being said, let's go check out some proven performers and see how we look. This is Remington and Gold Spear. This is a stupid name. No, Golden Saber. Golden it's not Saber. a stupid name. Lightning strikes twice. <laughs> okay, here we go. 185 grains. Try it out. Okay, next up, we have our proven performer. Spear gold dot, 124 grains. Thank you. The stuff does pretty well. Ooh. Interesting. Here's a gusher. Let's review the high speed. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take Locking a look. Dogs and get dudes who support gun control have wives that have boyfriends. This is my dad advice. We have the nine millimeter versus 45. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the nine millimeter for, first. Um, it should be noted that we know that Spear Gold Dot is a great round. If you wanna come and take a look here close, you can see how large the pedals are. Yeah. And what we're trying to show here with this test is that although both are good rounds, it's been known how well the Spear Gold Dot is loaded. And you'll see here when we compare it to the 45 that it performed just a little bit better. But if honestly, you come, like that, that smacks harder than a Harry Potter movie. Does. If you come to the back here, um, we can see that it deflected through the spine and through the support uh, pillar that we have right there. That just has to be there due to, to make these. But it, it certainly had a lot of power. You can see that it fractured that. If that were the spine, that's lights out right there. That's, you're going down at that point. So we compare that to the 45 which also performed very well, but is loaded not quite as well as that round. This isn't so much a comparison of which one is better, but rather to show you that nine millimeter can perform really well compared I, to- I see no point at the, like to, for that 40, for me to use that 45 at this point. 
Now, to be clear, if you're using a really good round, which we'll show later, you might see a point to do it. But we can say, look how large that hole is. So the 45 is just a larger caliber. So we do have a larger overall hole. The pedals didn't expand, yeah, as large as the Spear Gold Dot, just not quite as good of a round. But if you come around to the back, it had enough force to not only break the spine, but to also push it um, out of the dummy right there. So we do have a lot of power out of that round. I don't know if we can completely rule out that this is a, a pre-existing torque injury though. No, that's a good point right there, actually. Well, I also have a question. Okay. Do you think the speed of the round uh, affects how it pedals? Like, is that maybe why it doesn't pedal as good? That's... I would say that makes a lot of sense. That's, I mean, that's all, all I can really see, you know. And that's why I see nine millimeter uh, having a little bit going for it. So although a large heavy round is good, um, as we know, like faster rounds, like five, five, six, especially at closer distances, perform really well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna compare the MHPs now, especially since they're the same ammunition manufacturer. And I'm interested to see which of those performs better. So now we're gonna be testing rounds of the same manufacturer. So right here, we have Norma MHP, made by the same company. Of course, the speeds and grainage between the two are different, but I'm interested to see when we have rounds of the same make and manufacturer, how those perform, and perhaps we'll see a better differentiation between nine millimeter and 45. Let's get into it. Norma. This is Norma nine mil. It's uh, 108 grains and 1300 feet. Per second. second. <laughs> Norma, 45. This is uh, 175 grain at 1053 FPS. What's also interesting is that it's 413 foot pounds between the 9 mil and the 45. Interesting note. Tried to hit roughly the same spot. Now it should be noted that if you can take a look here at the right side, the MHP performed very well. Um, it actually ended up flowering and pedaling out pretty good, very similar to the Spear Gold Dot. So I'm very happy with this performance. And if you look at the back here, it did once again strike the spine and shatter it even more. Um, so great performance from it. Uh, a really great showing from that particular round. Now when it comes to the 45, it Pedaled out pretty similarly, actually. Um, however, of course, as you can see, it had a little bit more behind it because the entrance wound is just quite large, as we've seen here from all of these, that it, there's just more, you know, size and diameter of the actual slug, which could be good as far as incapacitating somebody. Now, if you look at the back, very similar performance. It struck that support structure slash the spine and shattered it. <laughs> So just like the nine millimeter. So right now, I'm not really seeing much of a difference between these two rounds, Charlie. No, not really not much of a difference. I think if that support structure is there, you could even dare to say that you only need one bullet for two bad guys. <laughs> Possibly. Right now, I'm still trying to rack my brain around, uh, like, the, it's so marginal. Yeah, well, I mean, pistols are just kind of marginal. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is like, they just aren't that great. Like they, they, they will, 100% they'll kill people. Obviously they've killed a lot, but like as far as like compared to a rifle or a shotgun, like not a whole lot of power behind them. So you really have to hit those structures that need to be hit, whether it be a major blood vessel or something in the central nervous system. Otherwise you're staying up, dude. Buffalo boar, very hot 45. This is Buffalo Bore 45 ACP plus B, 230 grain, 950 FPS. These are, that's hot. Yeah, that's really hot loads. All right, center of the chest. Here we go. Ready? Oh, that recoil, bro. How did that feel? A little bit more uh, stout than I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> Buffalo bore nine millimeter. So the 45 performed very well. How will the nine millimeter do? Buffalo bore nine millimeter Thank plus you. P plus 124 grain, 
Okay. 1,300 feet per second. That's... It's smaller, but I think the loads are just as hot. Oh! Dude, I just creamed my adult diaper, bro. Okay, so we're gonna do this one more time, but let's take a look at what we have right here. So the 45, we're just shooting. So of course I nailed the rib, I'm too good of a shot, I'm sorry. Now it did absolutely shatter the rib as you can see right here. Now it shattered the rib completely and that took away a lot of the ass behind it, I believe. Now it sheared off the pedals right there and it stopped just short of the back rib right there, but it looked like it would have made it to the spine. On the nine mil, of course, we missed the rib and look at that, those pedals, like pretty, pretty intense right there. This is plus P plus. It is plus P plus. Now, holy sh okay. That actually went straight through. That's I did impressive. not, I did not think that it would do that. Okay, that's a lot of power. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna do two more shots. We're gonna do one on the other side to see if we can hit the sternum with that plus P, and then we're also gonna do a diaphragm shot. I just wanna see how these perform, especially with the fact that the 45 in this one hit the rib dead on. I'm wondering how the nine mil will perform when we do that. Okay, we have buffalo bore again, one in the sternum, and then one in the diaphragm. Buffalo bore, it's nine mil. It's hot, 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 hot. That recoil is not that bad with that plus P plus. I thought it would be more stout. Less stout than just, just normal not, plus P. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels, you know, a little bit hotter, but it's it's not bad. 45 Buffalo Boar. We're gonna put one in the lung, and we're gonna put one in the diaphragm, a little bit opposite of the nine mil, just so we can get similar shot. Ammunition. This is Buffalo Boar, 45 extra spicy. Did you, wait, I, did you hit the bone every time? Dude, I, I'm pretty sure that the, the round is just so big, it just wants to hit the. Cause that was it's a. just slowing down. It, yeah, oh no, that's perfect. Yo, this one. This could, dude, that went, whoa, Ooh. that exited on both. That must, oh, it grazed. Oh my God. Hey. And, it's, and then it hit, hit the, the steel. Hit the dude, once again, I'm, I'm such a good shot that I hit the steel through a person. What a legend, dude. Man, it's hard being as good as I am. I actually hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, let's see the back on these ones over here. So, oh, do, wait. no, that, that was from the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. It didn't go through. Okay, so the one on the sternum, so we take a look at the, geez, the one on the sternum, it shattered the sternum, uh, much like what that did to the rib, but it looks like it stopped at the rib. Yeah, you can see at the back here where the round actually stopped. If you want to come around here, Micah, yeah. it's right next to the first exit wound. This is kind of it's just kind of deep. Um, so if you want to come around to this side over here, it's just on the inside over there. It's kind of hard to oh, see. Yeah, I got you. So it definitely slowed down. Um, the one through the through the abdomen, that's a w ridiculous entrance wound. Like that has some power behind it. That's not what a nine millimeter usually looks like going through uh, gelatin. Like that is quite. Put your finger in there, Charlie. How easy is it to get in? Easy. Now compare that with to, me. I'm not gonna do that. This is why we have interns. Uh, now put it through the MHP wound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And on the one through the diaphragm, it stopped on the spine again. Similar results. We can definitely say that the 45 with um, that heavy granage definitely had the power to make it completely through. Uh, the question is now: Do you specifically you can? You can 
can pull your fingers out. Now, I guess the question is, is does that you know, specifically matter? Do you want that much power? Now, certainly it has more than enough power to get through clothing and stuff. I guess what's, what I want to do at this point is should we do a contact shot on the side and try to shoot through with the buffalo bore? It's actually harder trying to get my fingers Like how far would it go? It, really? Yeah. Like weird. Yeah. Noticeably harder. We're at 120 yards. We're going to take a shot with 45 to show you um, how slow the round is. It's kind of cool. It's a little bit harder to lead and hit moving targets with a 45 compared to 9 mil. So we'll go ahead and start with the Nighthawk 45. Oh! Hey, there we go. So as you can see, it's a, it's fun because you can usually see the round traveling if the light's correct. And it, it's just a slow round. Um, so it's a little bit harder to hit a moving target, uh, which is a consideration in certain environments. Let's go ahead and try the 9 mil. Final thoughts. We've seen, a, we've seen a lot of stuff happen today. I think most interesting is that with the 45 and the 9 mil, we weren't seeing a whole lot of differences in terms of ballistics between the two, which was surprising to me. I really did think, Charlie, did you think that we were gonna see more as far as like the 45 causing more damage? Yeah, I thought the 45 was gonna slay. Yeah, so did I, man. Um, so that was really interesting to me that really between the two, they had more than enough um, you know, energy behind them to deliver lethal force and to expand almost very similarly. Certainly the 45 could be larger with a really good loading, but the Spear Gold Dot did wonderfully. Um, so well-loaded ammunition between the two kind of tended to level the playing field quite a bit. And beyond that, there's a couple other things to think about. You know, as far as you know, would you pick 9mm versus 45? Another thing to think about as well is going to be capacity. With a 9mm, you can just carry more in the same size handgun. And for me, that's what matters more. I like to have more rounds. Rounds win gunfights. So if I can carry more, 100% where I'm at. So I typically carry my Glock 17 with an extra mag. Am I going to need it? Maybe not, because in a lot of concealed carry scenarios, it, it's been shown to be pretty close and over pretty quick. Uh, you can watch Active Self Protection and a couple other channels that go over that kind of stuff. But we're not just talking about concealed carry, now are we? So when it comes to that, we have to consider how much ammunition I can carry, which is why I like the 9mm. Now, that being said, I do carry 45 at times because I, I do like the 45. But you have to understand that the Nighthawk that we have here is a race gun. That thing is fast. It is a $4,000 gun, and it is incredible. But for a similar gun to like the 17, like the Glock 21, that's just as lightweight, um, you're going to have more recoil than a 9mm. And for me, what matters the most is being able to deliver as many rounds as I'm able to with as much accuracy as I'm able to. And for me, the 9mm tends to just be better at that. I'm sure that's going to anger people, but don't get angry at me. Go out to the range and train more and, I don't know, prove me wrong or something. So that's what really matters when we talk to you at the end. Like, training is what's going to get you there, right? Whatever caliber you select, make sure that you're shooting if you're not shooting, you're going to be a liability to yourself and others if you get into a situation where you need to use these weapons. So as I've always said, train. Make yourself the weapon. These are awesome, awesome pieces of hardware. Both 9mm and 45 are very effective. Choose whatever. It's not going to hurt my feelings whichever one you choose, but what will hurt my feelings is if you don't train. Get out there and get training. Ladies and gentlemen, love you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to get out there and check out the Patreon. Exclusive content from my camera guy. Right, Micah? Yeet. <laughs> it will be good times. But uh, that's about all I got for you guys. So we'll uh, we'll see you later. I mean, okay. before we close, yeah. I think the test taught me one thing. Yo, go. I'm going to keep carrying 10 mil. <laughs> 10 millimeter giga chads, dude. You ain't wrong. All right, Charlie. Dad advice, brother. Hey, Altoid. Yeah, just, yeah, thank you. That was another one for sure. And that wasn't going to go to mouth. Okay, dad advice, go. We'll walk your dogs, and due to support gun control, have wives who have boyfriends. Wise words. <laughs>